Hi everyone, my name is Lori Brown with Lori McBrown Photography. I help women transform the way they see themselves in photos and I love to do personal branding photography. So I've invited one of my former personal branding clients to have an interview with me today and let you know how she's used her images and how they've impacted her business. So Sherry, could you introduce yourself? Let us know what you do and who you do it for. Yeah, no problem. Um, thanks for having me too, Lori. It's, uh, it's yeah. always nice to support you as well. So um, my name is Sherry Dufresne and I am a membership operations and marketing expert. And I primarily work with uh, artists or creatives who are wanting to sell their talents online. So those are the, the women, typically women. I do have uh, a couple of male clients, but on the most part, they are women uh, who are um, who are working to create uh, art and spread it around the world. So, so those are those are my people. And um, and what was the other question you asked me? You wanted to know what else did you ask? What are you me? doing? How you doing for? I think you covered it. Oh, good. Yeah, there you go. I didn't forget anything. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, well yeah, so last year um, you reached out to me. I think you found me on Google. Is that right? I did, yeah. So I, because of the space that I'm in and understanding marketing just in general, I was looking for something very specific. And I knew uh, in my world what it was called, but I was struggling to find a photographer who understood what I was looking for. So a lot of times when I was searching, uh, if I was looking for personal brand photography, I was getting like the LinkedIn headshots, right? <laughs> and I was like, totally not what I'm looking for. Um, so I kept searching. And of course, because um, uh, it, it needs to be somebody who is local, um, I it really obviously limited, you know, who was available. And, uh, and then I came across your site and I right away immediately understood that you understood what I was looking for in personal branding. So that was why I, how I found you and why I selected you. Oh, that's awesome. So like, what would you have typed into Google then? Like, were you looking for, per would you call it personal brand photography or would you call it something else? Uh, yeah, we would call it personal brand photography. Absolutely. Um, okay. But the way in the, I guess the interpretation of that, that phrase, it, it was different for me than it was for the other photographers. So, oh. uh, so a lot of times they were like, it was very corporate, like very headshots. And I'm like, in my world, a lot of times uh, you would see like a, what's called a hero image. It's that big, um, like top of the fold, above the fold, like the first thing that you see on a website. And it's usually like, um, like a lifestyle where the person is like, you know, maybe in a coffee shop or they're standing against a brick wall or, do you know what I mean? And it's not uh, in a studio, like, you know, when you were in, in elementary school with like the little you know display <laughs> behind you and and with arms crossed and I was like that's totally not me and I wanted to be able to have something that was fun and bright and uh full of creativity and life that would appeal to my clients um so that it's but I found everything I looked at it was all these like dull little corporate headshots and I was like that's not at all what I want so yeah so it was you I, I saw I was like okay she gets it she understood even just the uh that the the images were not always uh portraits like it, so that's the other struggle is having people understand that on the web everything needs to be the landscape and to try to explain that to not have to explain that to a photographer like you were very you understood right away the application of the images um, and how I was going to use them. So that's, that was really helpful too. Awesome. So I don't know if, um, I'm just going to interrupt for a second because my heater just kicked on and uh, can you hear that? No. Oh, oh now I can. can. Yeah, now I can. I'm going to go turn it off because it's crazy loud. It sounds it like a loud. plane landing. Sorry, I thought I had it down low enough that it wouldn't kick on. So apologies for interrupting. No worries. I'll have to cut that out. Create yep. more work for myself. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were going to get it all in one shot. <laughs> I was hoping, you know. Um, so anyways, I guess um, let, 
me get back on track. So how do you feel um, being in front of the camera, Sherry? Were you looking forward to that? <laughs> I definitely was not looking forward uh, to being in front of the camera. No, it's not something that I, um, that I enjoy. It's something that makes me uncomfortable. And uh, now you know about me, Lori, is when I'm uncomfortable, I giggle. So it, there was a lot of giggling, um, but it really wasn't something that I wanted to do. It was more that I knew it needed to be done. And I just kind of accepted that it was something that I wasn't going to enjoy, that I was going to have to do anyway. So, um, but one thing that I, uh, I found was really helpful was that you provided me with like that list of like the things that I needed to do to be able to um, be ready for it. So I was like, oh, I have a, a list. And of course I love lists, right? So I was like, I've got all these things. Okay, yes, I did this. And yes, I did this. And yes, I did this. So it helped me to, in looking back, it helped me to be um, a little more excited and maybe um, uh, like more comfortable, less anxiety about preparing for it, right? It was more of a fun, you know, like I picked out pillows to go with it. And, you know, there were things that I was doing to be, um, to be ready for it. And I think that really helped. So that was um, something that I think you did. I don't know whether you realized, but that you did that helped me to be more prepared. But I come from a family where my brother is a professional bodybuilder. And uh, so he is comfortable getting his photograph taken all the time. So there's always all these amazing pictures of my brother, you know, with the perfect smile and the perfect pose and all the perfect everything. And then there's me with a dorky look on my face, right? So I never quite understood how to stand or how to move or how to, you know, where my chin should be or any of the things. And you really helped me to feel comfortable um, learning how to do those things, I think is what I mean to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So hopefully by the second time I photographed you, you were feeling less anxiety and more excitement. <laughs> I, yeah, I think probably the, the idea of being in two different places as well. Like, so we were in your studio the first time around and that was um, maybe a bit like a little uncomfortable, maybe in the beginning, just because it was in someone else's space. And of course it was COVID, right? So all the things, right? So um, being in your studio, I probably was a little more uncomfortable and uh, and we had my little dog Atlas who was with me, so I was kind of worried about him. But I think as the day went on, that got a little better. But then being in another environment, uh, you know, so it was outside, it was a little uh, less formal, I guess, if that was it. So that really helped too to be in a different place and a little more comfortable. And then of course knowing you, um, you know, having met you a second time and. Yeah, it was just a lot easier uh, the second time around, for sure. But changing locations, super, uh, I, I totally recommend doing that too, because that really, um, and I got so many different types of photos and yeah, so many things to use. So yeah. And I follow you online. And so I see you using your images all the time and I love it. Every time <laughs> I'm like, yes, he's using another one. So tell, tell us so that everyone knows like, how, how much mileage have you gotten out of these images so far? So the, the very best thing about it is that I don't do any of that stuff. So I literally took all of the photos that I selected uh, that I liked, that I purchased from you. Uh, I put them all in a Dropbox folder for my team. And I was like, all of these are approved, do whatever you want with them. And they just uh, go. So I have a writer that does all of my blog posts and um, she actually does all the captions now for my social media as well. Uh, so she uses them for like all my blog posts, all my promotional stuff. She uses them in emails that I send out to people. Um, and then I have somebody else who manages all of my social presence. So she uses all of the images and I'm like, the nice thing about it, and I'll totally admit is like some pictures obviously I love better than others. But she picks the ones that I don't necessarily love as much, um, but she uses them in a way that I'm like, oh, I really like how she did that. That's I, I like that photo now. Right. So um, to be able to just like hand them off to my team and say these images are approved, 
do whatever you want with them. And yeah, I, I see them everywhere. <laughs> so uh, I'm like, oh, there I am again, right? Like, thank goodness I have good photos of myself, right? It um, makes it so much easier for my team to use it to promote uh, my brand. So mm. yeah, super helpful. They love you. <laughs> <laughs> so have you been getting noticing like a difference in your business since using more images of yourself? Because before I don't think you were sharing as much of yourself, right? Oh, absolutely. And uh, and because I am my brand and I I they were essentially the photos were the the, the building blocks for all the rest of the things that I wanted to do, but I hadn't done yet because it didn't have good photos. So we needed the photos first to then build all of the other things in my business to start promoting myself at a totally different level. Yeah, it's uh, so now I'm, in, I'm a lot more confident about promoting myself because I feel as though I'm presented in a way that I'm credible. I know what I'm talking about. I have a professional image. Do you know what I mean? I've invested in my business. So I present myself in a way that uh, people uh, feel that I'm credible, like if that makes sense, do you know what I mean? Like they really understand that that I'm I'm not just fly by the seat of my pants, you know what I mean? Or I'm just gonna dis disappear tomorrow, you know? It, like it's I'm established, right? If that, yeah. So it it really I think it really makes a difference in how people see me, and I'm more confident in sharing myself because of that. And they're all on brand too, right? Because we went and. Depth, talking about your brand colors and which is why you went and bought pillows and stuff like that yeah so that your clothes and and all the accessories and stuff all kind of like everything is cohesive right the full set even between the studio and the on location is cohesive yep absolutely so we um I did use some of the same uh clothing from my first shoot to my second some of my favorites um, but yeah, I went and bought like, you know, pillow covers that matched my brand and, um, you know, different things that I have, like that they might notice around my office, like while I'm online, they might recognize my coffee cup, you know? So, yeah. So I had things that were very, um, on brand and then we did the, um, the fun, uh, picture frame. So I think my, my. <laughs> My business manager loves that because she can take that and she can put like little captions on the on the on the image. So it's like a message that is unique to whatever it is that she's trying to promote. So yeah, we had a lot of fun props and stuff as well. And everything feels like me, right? And the we did the one with the graffiti wall, right? I have some plans for that. We haven't really used that one a lot, uh, but I have some ideas for where I'd like to use that in a specific promotion. So there's all these fun things that um, that uh, that you created that I don't know that I would have thought of on my own. Like you sort of drove those those things for me and and encouraged me to you did like to think about the way that I wanted to be presented. Right. And I was like, oh yeah. Right. Like I need pillows or, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, it really was very helpful for you to, to do that. And, and yeah, all my stuff just seems like people see it and they recognize it's me. Right. So yeah, it's super, super, uh, easy for my team to use as well. Right. Like it's, they can use it anywhere. It doesn't matter. So, yeah. and everybody loves my dog. Now they're like, oh, <laughs> right. They see him and, you know, the photos of him and stuff. Yeah, he's he's pretty popular little guy now. Yeah. Whenever you can get, like, pets in there, like, it's gold, right? Everyone, who doesn't love dogs? <laughs> right? Yeah. And you're totally right there. And just about everybody that I work with has a dog at home. And especially now, you know, that so many people working from an at-home office and they have an animal around, you know, you, you're used to getting to know other people's animals. And so he's just such a big part of my, my brand as well. Right. Like people know that's, that's my little dog, right. He's, he's over there sleeping. You can't see him, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always say, um, the number one way to get engagement on your social media is to share an image of yourself and, if things start to slow down and you need more likes and comments, throw, if you have a pet, throw a picture of your dog or your cat up there and you're going to get all kinds of comments and likes and stuff and it really can boost your page every once in a while. So 
Yeah, I loved when I when I found out you had a dog. I was like, yes, he needs to come. <laughs> yeah, and I think having him there, like the first time around, it was a bit stressful because I was worried about him in your space. But when we were outside, he, it was, um, it, you know, he kind of just like he was like something to hold or he was like something to focus on. So it kind of made the experience a little, it was like a, like a, what do they call it? The animals that you use or like a comfort yeah, animal, support, right? a support yeah. animal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He supported me. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was good to have him there for sure. In the beginning, I did question you and I was like, are you sure? Right. But yeah, it was definitely a good decision to have him there. I, I was glad that he, he was part of the whole project. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Tell us, like, I don't know if there's any more questions I could ask you about that. So I think we can just skip ahead to, um, why don't you tell us where we can find out more information about you and what's your next big thing? Like, what is the next big thing that you want to promote? Oh, gosh. Uh <laughs> So, uh, so if you are looking for me online, um, my name is super hard, makes it really challenging to find me, uh, but it is sherrydufresne.com is my website. <laughs> and, uh, and so I don't know if I need to spell that or you can just drop it somewhere, Lori, but there you I go. Will. And, uh, and right now, so recently I launched my own membership community. So, uh, in, one of the challenges uh, that I have found is that I, I only have so much time in my day and I would love to be able to reach more creatives, more artists, and be able to help them to create their own membership communities. But what I struggle with is that I can only help so many because there's only so, only so much time in the day. So my idea was, well, if I'm creating membership communities for everybody else, why do I not just create one for myself? So uh, recently I launched that uh, and I did, uh, I did pretty well for my first time around. I was really pleased. I have a really great group of women uh, who are learning. Uh, they're all at different stages. One has a, a membership community of uh, over 2000 people already. Um, oh, wow. so she, yeah, so she's just looking, she was more looking for like a way to connect with other artists and bounce ideas off of in a safe environment, almost like a business group for artists where they can talk to one another um, and be able to get that sort of, I know, ideas and, you know, hey, have you tried this? And oh, I did this and this worked, you know, sort of like chatting with one another. So that's what she was looking for. And then I have all different stages of building their membership communities, all the way to somebody who, um, um, has not even started, right? She is, she is and she was the, my only person that bought an annual membership. So she is, she's committed, she's in. Um, she just needed to, to commit and start, right? So, so yeah. she is uh, starting from the very beginning. I think this week she's actually doing her first recording to try and teach, learn how to teach online. Um, and so she, we're walking through that together. So that's what I'm working on right now. So I'm not actually accepting new members, but there is an option to get on the wait list uh, for the next time that I am opening, which I plan to do depending on how things are going. Uh, probably in about three months. Uh, just want to be able to get these ladies ready and you know comfortable before I accept in a new group of people. But uh, but yeah, if you want an invitation, you can always go to sherrydufresne.com and uh, and there's a button there. I think it says uh, to get on or whatever it says. It, it yeah. it'll tell you what to do. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's and right. You never know when someone's going to come across this. This is going to be living on YouTube and they could come across it um, in three months or even later and find your information there. And maybe you are accepting new yeah. members at that time. Yeah, absolutely. So. Right. So, and you're, you're totally right there in that um, there will be a few times each year that I'll be accepting new members. So, uh, so make sure that if it's not open to get on the wait list and, uh, and I'll let you know when we have new, new spots. Yeah, and one thing to point out, which I think people probably know, but just in case, like you don't have to only be appealing to people locally. That's what's amazing about what you're creating for people, these memberships, is that they can teach their art to someone who lives halfway across the world, right? So that's why they have, you know, 2,000 members, because they're probably all over the place. 
Yes, and you're totally right there. So they, uh, you would find uh, probably over half are, are North America. So, but it, it, the appeal, you're right, is that you're not stuck to, you know, whatever city you live in. Like in the artist's world, uh, they were always very much one-to-one. -one. You create a piece of art, you sell it at a market to one person, and then you're back to the drawing board building another piece of art. So in this case, you are building a piece of art, you are teaching a group of people how to create that art, and then each month they pay a membership fee to be able to have access to that training. So the idea is, is that you can teach it once and then sell, sell it thousands of times. So it's very scalable. It allows an artist to now uh, teach maybe two or three projects a month. Um, you know, like obviously they're always coming up with new content. So there is, it's not easy, right? Like you do have to work at it, but the ability to be able to sell that to many people allows you to scale and make a really, a really good living um, with your talents. So it's a, uh, it's a perfect model for artists. And I don't, we didn't mention this, but, and I know that you know this uh, about me, Lori, is that my son is actually an artist. So that's kind of where uh, the, the love comes, right? Is that, you know, eventually he's going to be like, all oh, right, my mom can help me make money right now. He's, you know, he's still doing the artist thing, right? Uh, yeah. You know, uh, but creating one-to-one, -one, but eventually he'll realize that maybe we can, uh, we can make him some, some, some big dollars, right? You know, yeah, we don't need to be, we don't need to fall into that stereotype of starving artist, right? You can no. be an artist who can pay the bills. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. And most of these girls make more money in a month than the average person makes in a year. Like they do yeah. really well. So, and it's, uh, it's so uh, gratifying for me to know that the, the tech and the marketing, the operations part of it is not where they excel. That's where they struggle. Uh, so to be able to give them those tools and put them and set them up in a place and give them the guidance that they can then sell their talents and really enjoy their life um, is, is like so gratifying. It's like, it's by far my favorite thing about my job, right? To be able to watch them really do so well and, and just, they just needed a little bit of help, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot of fun. I like my job. <laughs> That's so. awesome. That's that's the way it should be, right? We should all be enjoying what we're doing. I'm so glad that you enjoy what you're doing and you're able to help so many people. It's amazing. I hope people find this and through this are able to find you and start making some big bucks doing the art. Yeah, well, and uh, by creatives, it could be any, That that's another thing is it doesn't necessarily need to be a specific type of art, right? So if you have a talent... Uh, so I usually tell people, if you have people that say to you, how did you do that? How did you create that? That you can turn that into a membership community. So, so if you have something that you do well, that sort of baffles or bewilders other people, you, you really could uh, take that talent and turn it into a membership community. So yeah, it's for anybody. Sure. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day today, Sherry. I really appreciate it. Um, is there anything else that you want to share before we, I let you go? Uh, the really, uh, the only thing I would say is just thank you so much for like really putting, uh, pushing me to get out of my comfort zone, to be comfortable, you know, pre providing an environment where, um, where I was comfortable to have my photograph taken making me look good even though I was giggling because I was uncomfortable do you know what I mean and and really like you did such a good job of creating something that I was so confident I just handed it to my team and said go use it do whatever you want with it right so I uh, you just created such a valuable asset for my business um and really I've built everything on that so um so thank you really it was a awesome. good decision definitely Good. I'm so glad. Thank you so much for saying that. That's really sweet. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm aiming to do. So I'm glad that worked out. <laughs> I know. And you do like 
lovely photos of families and all the other things, right? Like you, you have so many talents, right? I just, uh, for me, you know, it was my priority was marketing my business, but, you know, starting, you know, with family photos or anything else, I would definitely consider that too. So, yeah. Oh, thank you so you much. Talent. You should start a membership community. <laughs> oh, believe me. I, you mentioned this to me before and I'm like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm going to do this one day. I am. I, <laughs> I I'm actually, you. <laughs> uh, right? There you go. I actually, I do have a client that is a photographer and that's actually what she's working on right now is creating a membership community, but she is in uh, Switzerland. So she is teaching all of her training in Swiss German. So, <laughs> right? Oh. Yeah. So it's, um, so yeah, we meet usually once or twice a month and I teach her how to, you know, the next steps and the things that she's doing. And, uh, and then she uh, goes away and she builds it all. And then she comes back and she loves it because she says she learns English. She improves her English at the same time. Cause well, of course English. Yeah. So yeah, it's really a lot of fun. So there's, there's definitely room for uh, photographers out there as well. So yeah. Yeah. That yeah, it's it's on my list, Sherry. It's okay, on my list. <laughs> you know where to find me, SherryDufresne.com. <laughs> right? There you go. And I'm gonna make sure it's spelled right because I know that the captions that I create for this, it's gonna spell my name L O R I because it always does, and it's probably gonna spell your name S H E R R Y instead of C H E R I. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go try to fix them all. It's hard. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll make sure all the links are correct for sure. There you go. Perfect. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank well, you so much, Lori. Thank you, Sherry. It's so great to see you today. Yeah, so, you as well. Thanks. See you soon. Bye. Bye.